let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, because you are for us, truly, what can stand against us? But there are so many things we have to deal with each day that push us, that make us almost feel at times like we're cut off from you and your love. Heavenly Father, restore that healing that is needed in our lives so that as we walk into 2023, we can focus on that reality that we are not cut off. Instead, that you have healed us and renewed us through that forgiveness that only you can offer. We thank you for this amazing gift in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Hancock, Iron Man, Transformers, Spider-Man, the Justice League, Superman, Batman, the Guardians of the Galaxy, all the films that have been made, all the hype that's been generated, all the dollars that have been spent over the years have made one thing perfectly clear. Americans love their superheroes. We love the way they can leap tall buildings in a single bound. We love the way they get themselves out of danger and can overcome all of the most difficult challenges. We love them ultimately because they can do things that regular people like you and I cannot do. We don't always save the day. We don't always get the girl. We live in a world where good does not always triumph over evil. Instead of black and white, our world often resembles this hazy shade of gray. You see, life is not a movie. It's a journey. Sometimes life can really be hard. It isn't always fair. And Paul, the writer of Romans, knew that. He knew that Rome, ancient Rome, was not an easy place for any Christian to live. He knew that our broken world isn't always an easy place for any follower of Jesus to live. There are times that we feel like we have been cut off from God and need healing. But that didn't stop Paul. That did not stop words of confidence in God from flowing freely from his pen. That did not stop him from praising his God and Savior. And it did not stop him from encouraging others, you and me, to do the same thing. Now, we may not possess any supernatural abilities or have superhuman strength. Let's face it, we're not superheroes. But according to Paul, we are something far, far better. In Jesus, we are not cut off from God. We are super victorious. Text Verse 35 of the text begins with a, a real simple question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? But that's not the only question today. It's actually the last in a series of questions that Paul asks beginning back in verse 31. It starts with, well, what shall we say in response to this? And what more really needs to be said after verse 28, which we looked at last Sunday? We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Paul's unspoken answer here is nothing. Question number two. If God is for us, who can be against us? Did we just sing that in the last song? Since we are on God's side, or actually even better, since God is on our side, who or what? poses a threat to our eternal future. If you read between the lines here, you can hear Paul say, no one. Question number three. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? God sacrificed his only son to take away our brokenness, our sin. And since God spared no expense to meet our greatest needs, don't you think he'll also take care of all the lesser needs in our life? Paul's line of reasoning here only allows for one answer. Of course he will.
Question number four. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Now, since God has called you his own from eternity and washed away your sins, who has any right to condemn you? I think we've heard this answer before. No one. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Paul could easily have answered, no one, but he didn't. Instead, he asks yet another question. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Paul listed seven different dangers that threaten to separate believers from the God who loves them. Trouble literally means pressure. Sometimes we can feel it. We feel that pressure when we don't do what everyone else is doing, or when we don't talk like everyone else is talking, or when our Christian convictions make us pretty unpopular. Trouble then leads straight to hardship. It can be hard to follow Jesus. Sometimes it feels like we're being punished even when we do the right thing. Even when we're with people that we might call friends or family, sometimes we feel like, I'm all alone here. If people sometimes ignore or even avoid us because of our faith, well then, persecution goes one step further. Does something like this sound familiar to you? Someone says, wait a minute, how can you believe in creation? when there's scientific evidence pointing directly to evolution. How can you believe in a loving God when there's so much pain, trouble, and misery in our world? Those are just some simple ways that our faith can quickly come under attack. Now, so far, I think we can easily identify with those ancient Romans, the Christians there. We've all experienced trouble, hardship, or persecution in at least one way or form. But what about the other four, the rest of Paul's list? What about famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Have you ever missed a meal because of what you believe? Has your faith in Jesus ever put you into a life-threatening situation? Has anyone ever pointed a gun to your head and said, deny Jesus or die? that way, we really don't have much to complain about, do we? We have freedom of speech in this country. We can worship whenever and wherever we wish. But there are a lot of places in this world where people are forced to meet in secret, are not allowed to wear Christian jewelry, or cannot speak the name of Jesus in public without the risk of being shot. It really doesn't matter whether it's the 1st century A.D. or the 21st century. Persecution for Christians is a reality. And that was Paul's point in quoting Psalm 44. For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now whether it's direct, obvious persecution, or maybe more subtle challenges to our faith, we all have to deal with our own set of personal tragedies, difficulties, or earthquakes in our own lives. Things like sickness, not doing all that well in school, injuries, asthma, losing your job, a fight with someone you love, divorce, abuse, the death of a loved one. But there is truly nothing that can cut us off from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All of those difficulties and troubles lay well at your feet like rubble. You might even still feel a bit trapped underneath the weight of it all. But those things will not cut you off from the love of God. So, this morning, we are here, this my apartment, why not? We are here to be reminded that we are not going to be cut off from God. We have love that we receive through his word, love that we receive through the water of baptism, love that we receive through the gift of our Lord's Supper. So, 
Let's think of this altar as God's presence, which that's a really good example of. Remember this morning that God's love stretches out to you. No matter how many tragedies or disasters that life's rubble that gets dropped on us, God's love is not going to be stopped. Let's see. Trouble? It just falls right off. Hmm. How about hardship? Well, in Jesus, it's simply not hard enough. Or, and I've mentioned this one, these are the big seven, persecution. You can't crush that love. Or, that's okay, I actually wanted them to fall. <laughs> Famine. Famine is not going to starve God's love. Didn't Jesus himself call himself the bread of life? Nakedness. Boy, how do you deal with that one? It doesn't change the fact that we have been clothed with Christ. Two more. Danger. There is no danger within the mighty fortress of our God. And how about that last one? Sword. Now, an earthly sword may stab or kill us, but we have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, which brings His truth and His love to each one of us as His children. Now, all of those things that stand in our way, all of these things I share, the seven in that list, that make our lives so desperate, so difficult, so sad, and so lonely, they're all like feathers when it comes to God's love. To us, any one of those things can feel like a 10-ton truck that's been dumped on our shoulders. But they are light as a feather when it comes to trying to crush God's love. They just fall off. They might seem like a wrecking ball to us, but they cannot bring down God's love. Nothing can cut off God's love. Now, that's not to say that you're supposed to feel like the challenges you faced in life are like a feather. God knows that certain things have brought you down. They've made you feel sunken, burdened. And that's not to say in the future that your trouble or hardship you're going to face will feel less painful. Paul's message for you this morning is that when you're broken down the side of the road, when you feel like you're standing all alone, or when you feel like you're stuck in bed and you just don't want to get up, God's love still reaches out to you. Having Jesus in our lives does not make them painless and simple. We're in a broken, simple world. We feel the consequences. But not even a sinful world can stop His love from stretching out to us. Jesus remains strong in our lives when we are weak, sick, trouble, or even dying. And that love, it isn't just the words, I love you, typed over and over again in the Bible. That love was displayed in Jesus. God's Son took on our human flesh for 33 years. He was subjected to a lifetime of laws that God gave. Then Jesus was hung on a cross. Think of this. The God who hated child sacrifice allowed his own son to get beaten, mangled, and literally sent to hell. Now, some people are offended when I say that. How could a God of love sacrifice his only son? What kind of a God is that? They would much rather talk about a God of love being one who just kind of winks at our brokenness and says, oh, that's okay, we all sin. But God did not want you and me to constantly be subjected to this pain and sorrow. Our sin had to be taken off us and disposed of forever. So God, in His Son, did that, dying for our sin. He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all. God spared nothing in saving you and me from hell itself. His love is more than just words. It is action. You are connected to God, not cut off. I'd like to try something. 
We're going to see how awake you are this morning. In a moment, I'd like you to stand and move towards the center aisle as much as possible and have as many of you as possible take hold of the string, even though it's kind of in knots. Um, because in this way, I want you to know that you are connected not only to each other, but also to our Lord himself. Let's go ahead and do that for those of you who are able and willing. Be able to spread out here on this screen as many as possible. So we can on. The video will catch this. <laughs> <laughs> this is outstanding. It's quite correct. Now, as you're holding that, remember Paul's words. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present, the future, neither any power, height, depth, or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus. This is a visual picture of the ministry we are doing here at Christ our Redeemer. We are connected in this church and in this community, and my prayer is that we would continue to work together as we stay connected to each other and to our God and the real life and hope that comes to us in Jesus. You can put the string down and head back to your seats for a moment. But thank you. I thank you for being willing to take the risk and move. <laughs> so, you know, What's the point besides the visual example that we just saw this morning? This morning, we dug out a 1950-year-old love letter from God to us. He's not embarrassed about it. He had it published, made into a bestseller, and translated throughout the world. And if you ever begin to doubt that love, then let's go back to this love letter again and again and remember, you are connected to God's unconditional love in Jesus. Your true superhero loves you dearly. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen.